Good morning. Um, kind of empty up front here, but there are some faces I haven't seen for some time. Connie and Richard Erdlach are here. It's great to have them back. Um, medical technology, I guess, right? So they said they've seen us every week. We haven't seen them. More technology, that's, that's great. I'd rather have everyone here than, than watching us uh, online, but it's great that they can't see us when they can't be here. Anyway. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Of course, we have uh, all the normal weekly activities scheduled as far as I know. Tonight at 5 here in the sanctuary, we'll have uh, corporate prayer time, and then Wednesday mornings, the ladies will be meeting here at the church. That is at 10. Uh, 10.30. Okay. And then there will be Wednesday night cell groups and the couples meeting on Thursday night. Excuse me. Men's discipleship here at the church Friday morning at 8. Um, but I guess the big announcement, in a week and a half, we have missions conference starting. Um, April Wednesday, April 21st will be the first uh, night, of, uh, first day of the missions conference, and our missionary this year is Erin Bueller. Um, can't say what country she's serving in. Apparently, it's a closed country, and there are <coughs> um, safety issues for her. But she'll be here uh, for the women's cell group Wednesday morning at the church, then she'll be meeting with a combined cell group Wednesday evening, uh, then she'll meet with the couple cell group on Thursday, and then we're, we're planning a uh, Friday night dessert for the entire congregation, anyone who would like to come, and then she'll be with us Sunday morning in both the Sunday school hour and the worship hour. I believe we've got a video about missions. Has anyone shared you the free circles before? Have you heard of the free circles before? Has anyone ever shared the free circles with you before? No. Mm -hmm. So this is the first circle. So this represents the world that's broken. All of us live in a broken world. You only have to turn on the news and see suffering, death, war, sickness, rape, disease. It's everywhere, right? But you know, God didn't actually create the world to be like this, full of brokenness, eh? Here's the second circle. This circle represents God's perfect design. God's perfect design was a world without brokenness. A world full of love. Full of joy and peace yeah. and unity. But what we did was we sinned. Sin could be anything from lying to murder. Wait, so like, just like normal lying or like hard lying? And what sin did, it separated us from God's perfect design and threw us into brokenness. And so people try all kinds of different things to get out of brokenness. They might try drugs or alcohol. Or maybe chasing a career or money. Smoking. Even bullying other people at school. Oh, sleeping suicide. around. Suicide, exactly, a good example. But it doesn't actually fix the problem of brokenness. It's like a bungee cord. We just get snapped straight back into brokenness. And ultimately, if people die in that state of brokenness and separate from God, and that means that that's eternal separation from God. Do you know what this place is often called? Yes. So what God did was, he didn't want to leave us in that place. God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus was God, so yes. he had no sin. And when he died and rose again, he actually took on all of our sin and cancelled it like he crushed it. He said if we would turn away from our sin and believe in Jesus and make Jesus the Lord of our life, we become restored, restored back into God's original design. And you become a new creation, a new person in Christ. And will restore us back into relationship with him. So there's only two kinds of people in this world, people that are in brokenness or God's perfect design. Where would you see yourself? Probably right there too. Would you say so? Love? The bungee stage. And where would you like to be? So where would you like to be? You'd like to be here? Yeah. 
So here? So is there anything that's stopping you? From turning and, and believing in Jesus? And allow him to be Lord and King of your life? Stubbornness? Probably not. Probably way too honest. Nothing mm. stopping me. You know the awesome news about Jesus? He is the only way out. If you try to clean yourself up before coming to Jesus, it's like trying to get clean before you take a shower. Oh, I see, yeah, I get that. Is there anything stopping you? No. We shared the three circles with 34 people. Four were already believers. 13 chose to remain in brokenness, but some were deeply impacted. And 17 wanted to leave brokenness and receive Christ. There are many powerful ways to share the gospel. And the three circles is a great place to start. Three minutes. It took three minutes. And um, we have an amazing opportunity in Midland, Texas, four weekends from now. May 7th and 8th, Arise through East West will have an event in Midland, Friday night and Saturday. And we are recruiting people to come and join us to get into teams and to go out on Friday to share the gospel, the love of Jesus. And um, I've done this several times in different places, and I'm thrilled that Midland is going to have this event. We have people coming from all over, um, and we really want you to come and be a part of it. I know some of you have never done this before, and it freaks you out. Some of you have done it before, and the three circles is only a tool. There are other tools that people use. I personally like this one because it's sharing the love and the gospel of Jesus in a very um, not threatening way, but a very personal way. And um, so we are just recruiting, 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 and anybody who would be like to, like to do this, would you please contact Tom or me as soon as possible. We're going to have a dinner on Friday night. There will be worship time and prayer and probably a recap of the three circles. And then we will be dividing into teams. On Saturday morning, we will come back together, and you'll be assigned a team. If you really want to go with somebody you know, that's great, but it's kind of fun to go with somebody you don't know. And we'll be going all over Midland. We won't knock on doors, but we will be targeting areas where there, wherever people gather, parks, wherever that might be, sporting events. So um, if you're interested, please let me know. Um, I want you to know this. Sometimes you fumble the message. Sometimes the Holy Spirit takes you a different direction. But the thing that is most important is that you say yes. God wants us to be like in our Jerusalem, which is Midland, Texas. And he has divine appointments for us. There are people right now that are looking, that are searching, that are broken, and they're ready. And you might be the person that God points to that person. And you might be the one to get the harvest for Jesus. So I just want to encourage you to let me know if you are interested. And um, we would love to see you there. We have other people at other churches that are going to be joining us as well. So it's just going to be a really neat effort on the body of Christ. And if you have somebody you know that might be interested, let them know as well and get in contact with me. There will be a Zoom training the week before we go out, but Tom and I are also willing to train you and show you how to do the three circles, and we'll be doing some sort of training here for our congregation and maybe the gathering, those who want to join us. So uh, we'll keep you posted about that, but we really want your commitment, okay? <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Robin. Would you all stand with me for prayer? Father, thank you for calling us into your house. Beyond that, thank you for calling us into your family, for adopting us as sons and daughters, brothers and sisters of Christ. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Father, we ask that your spirit would be active and present, that 
so that our worship might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We thank you for what you have done for us and what you continue to do. We thank you for your provision. Father, we are so pleased that shortly we'll be having a baptism. We thank you for the way you change lives. We want to give you praise, the praise that you are due to honor you for who you are. We thank you. We pray this in Christ's name. You may be seated. Thank you, Fred. Good morning. And this is an awesome morning to be able to do this baptism. Um, after our Good Friday service, uh, Truman came up right after the service uh, with his dad and said, I, I want to get baptized. And we had a, a meeting together with, with Randy and just sat down and talked about why baptism? Well, you know, how do you see it and stuff? And just the things that I was hearing from Truman just really was uh, really encouraging because the Lord's hand is on this young man. He's moving in his heart, and he's going to share a little bit, so I'm going to let him share. But I just want to share, this is always a good opportunity, a kind of a, a remembrance for us of why do we get baptized because kind of we're standing in really warm water. It's like hot tub water. It's really cool. But... Um, Water, whether it's hot tub water or whatever, water in and of itself doesn't save. It doesn't cleanse us from our sins. It, when, when he gets dunked, it's not about he's getting saved right now. But baptism is about what has already taken place. That, that Truman has already asked Christ into his heart. I, I want to read this out of Romans 6 for us this morning. It says this, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And so that's kind of what, what, the, what we're doing here. It's in obedience to what Christ has given us through his great commission. But there's such beautiful symbolism in this in that when someone goes under the water, it, it's identifying with Christ, being crucified with Christ, dead and buried, and then coming out, out of the water, coming out new in Christ, being raised in Christ. And so we celebrate this. And this is what I want to encourage us as a body to do. First, I would like us to stand up. Because in, in the sense of you are witnesses uh, to this, important witnesses. And just as when Truman gave his life to Christ, uh, the angels celebrated, clapped, and cheered, my prayer would be that this morning as Truman is baptized, this fellowship would join with the angel choruses in clapping and cheering. Amen? But right now, I just want to give the mic to Truman just to be able for him to share what does Jesus mean to him. Um, so I wrote this down, so I'll just read off it. Um, I never got baptized, even though I was given the opportunity several times. The period of my life between my salvation when I was 11 and now was a time of growing in the Lord but also resistance, stubbornness, and fear. The only thing that has held me back was not my faith, nor my love of God. It was my reluctance to submit. And by extension, my only time in the Spirit was rare at best. I want to be baptized now because I am no longer afraid. 
I'm no longer going to convince myself that my relationship with God is good when I wouldn't even give my life to him. I wish to submit to God, be born again, and serve him all of my life. Amen. Truman, uh, before your dad baptizes you, which this is really neat, but before I've got three questions to ask. Do you confess Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead? Do you acknowledge that it is only by grace through faith in Jesus and his blood shed for you that you are saved and forgiven of your sins and it isn't by your own works but the gift of God to you? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit to live out your new life in Christ, to love the Lord God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love others as Christ loved you. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me pray. Let me pray. Father in heaven, we want to give you praise and thanks for Truman and his life. We want to pray that, Father, um, the work that you began in his life, you've already promised that you will complete it. And so we pray that for Truman, that he would keep his eyes fixed upon you, Jesus, because you are the author and perfecter of faith. So would you continue to grow him to be that man of God that will reflect your love, that will pursue you with a total abandon to you, Jesus. We thank you for that work that you're doing in him. Holy Spirit, fill him, anoint him. We pray even the gifts of the Holy Spirit that have been placed within him, within him would come forth. Jesus, in your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's continue standing. Let's just praise our Lord Jesus, who is worthy of all of our praise, all of our praise. He's worth everything. He's worth everything. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah. Who conquered the grave? He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Although blessing and honor and glory, is he worthy of this? He Ooh, 
Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And is Jesus our Messiah, the old, forever those he loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave from every people and tribe, every nation and tongue. He has made us a kingdom of priests to God to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Open the scroll, the Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom of priests to God to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? He is. He is. He is. Jesus shall reign where the sun does its successive journey. Run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore till sun shall rise and set no more. Blessings abound wherever he reigns. The prisoner leaps to lose his chains. The weary find eternal rest, and all the sons of want are blessed. To our King be highest praise, rising through eternal days. Just and faithful He shall reign. People and realms of every tongue dwell in his love with sweetest song, and infant voices shall proclaim their earthly blessing on his name. To Rising through each 
us shall reign. Let every creature rise and bring blessing and honor to our King. Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeat the loud amen to our King. Be highest praise, rising through eternal days, just and faithful he shall reign, Jesus shall reign to our king be highest praise rising through eternal days just and faithful he shall reign jesus shall Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise with our hands and with our voices right now. If we can, if we can clap for a baptism, we can give honor and praise to our Lord, right? Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Holy is your name. Thank you, Lord, for your depth and your love and your mercy and your forgiveness in our lives. We praise you, Father God. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. Child of God, yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say that I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say that I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say that I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say that I am. I am who you say that I am. The sun sets free, always oh, free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. In my Father's there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. Amen. Good morning. This is a time of our service. We want to 
um, praise the Lord or take care of prayer needs. Does anyone have a prayer request this morning? Yes, Teresa. Awesome. Okay, let's let's bring that to the Lord. Father, we uh, thank you for uh, Daniel's life. We thank you for his desire to serve and protect the community. And God, we just pray you would give him wisdom that's beyond his understanding even today. We pray for his safety, of course. But Lord, would you just guide his steps? Holy Spirit, would you speak to Daniel that he may hear your voice saying, this is the way, walk in it, neither turn it to the right or the left. Lord, would you guard his heart, his mind, and of course his body, Lord. Um, thank you for folks like Daniel. Thank you, Lord, that he is, he's so willing to serve and uh, God, we just pray that your, your blessing and your joy would be upon his life this day, and that he would know that this comes from you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to I pray for my wife real quick. She went home a little while ago <laughs> with a neck pain or something. Lord, we just want to lift up Cindy to you now. Um, God, I just pray you would give her a release. Uh, in that neck and um, she's wanting to be here but she, she's just in pain right now Lord would you just relieve that and um, help her Lord as she ministers to her mom help her to serve her mother well and uh, I just pray you give Cindy great relief Lord thank you for Cindy's life in Jesus name Amen Wanda This is David. Is she in Big Spring? Father, we uh, do lift up David as he's recovering, and uh, God, we just pray that your, your hand of protection would be on him, and that David would continue to give his whole heart to you, Lord, and um, God, I just, I just thank you for having met David, and um, he wants to serve you now, Lord, and I just pray you would bless him protect him through the surgery lord and we do lift up wileen lord we don't know what's going on uh, but you do and we just pray that uh, the doctors would find wisdom in these tests that were given and that you would be able to uh, give her relief and uh, i thank you for wanda's family and thank you for donna being down here now too and i just pray you would bless donna and her family as well the extended family in jesus name amen Yes, Cheryl. Amen. Tom, Brother Tom, I'm going to ask you to call on you to pray for that need for the three circles okay father we know that you love people we're reminded of that uh, as we've celebrated Easter we know that you care so much for people that you would Send your son to this 
garbage dump of a world that he would die so that people would have a chance to be restored in relationship to you, Father. Um, I pray, Father, that we would be able to see like you see and think about those around us like you think about them and love them. Father, I pray um, that you would uh, give us inspiration to be willing to step out of what may be comfortable into an area that may be very uncomfortable. But Father, that you would inspire us and fill us with your spirit, Father, and that as we um, we step out in faith, Father, that your spirit would move in a way that we would have divine encounters with those, Father, that you have been working in their hearts. And that divine encounter would change their lives, but change ours also. Help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear. I pray, Father, that that you would stir something in each person's heart here. And, Father, that there's other people in other congregations, Father, that they want to reach others around them. Pray, Father, that they would find their way to to our group. That they would find encouragement and find training. Find the things that would, would help them um, to reach out. And Father, we also pray, pray for those that, uh, Father, that you would just be drawing those people that you um, have been working in their hearts for years. We pray, Father, that we would have that divine encounter with that person. Father, you would lead that person to one of our group. And so, Father, we we lift these things to you, knowing that we have a part, but yet you desire to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think and that as we say yes to you Father you will do those things in us and through us in Christ's name Amen, thank you Tom Anyone else? It's a time where we want to remember our our tithes and offerings. Uh, If you're watching at home, uh, if you want to give online, we can do that. Or if you're here, you can do that as well. And there's plates at the back. If you're visiting today, uh, don't feel a need to to give. We'll just minister to you. I want to read this verse from Malachi chapter 3. Verse 10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's continue in worship. If you feel comfortable sitting, that's great. If you would like to stand, then join us. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer, with his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt and made me free. I will tell the wondrous story, how my lost estate to save, 
and his boundless love and mercy he the ransom freely gave sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me on the cross he sealed my pardon paid the debt and made me free you set me free my ransom sold free the darkness is over behold now i see a living redeemer love healing me forever forgiven this love song i bring you set me free I will praise my dear Redeemer. He is triumph, the power I'll tell. How the victory is given over sin and death and hell. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon paid the debt and made me free you set me free my ransom sold free the darkness is over behold now i see a living redeemer love healing me forever forgiven this love song i bring you set me free my ransom sold free the darkness is over behold now i see a living redeemer love healing me forever forgiven this love song i bring you set me free a living redeemer love healing me forever forgiven this love song I bring, you set me free. What love could remember no wrongs we have done? Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into the sea, like the bottomless shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. What patience would wait as we constantly roam? What father so tender, he's calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins are for many, his mercy is more. Riches, what riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was a payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath a debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, 
His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Let's stand. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 oh, that is who you are, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. He is your wake maker, your promise keeper, your light in the darkness. We all know people that are lost. And they need Jesus. As we worship, let's think of those people. Pray for them. Jesus to make a way. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Somebody here today, Lord, needs a miracle. So we lift that up to you. We're praying that you would make it one. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. All this to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And we will dismiss the children at this time. Here's what I'd like to in encourage you right now. We've got the. Yeah. Here's what I'd like to encourage you right now. We're making transition, right? We, we're, we've been in a worship mode of music. We're, we're transitioning into a, a sermon, a message. But stay in the place where whatever the Lord was doing, um, let Him continue to do that. Okay? Um, why I'm saying that is that. Um, Exactly when Robin was uh, saying, I feel like someone needs to hear that, I was thinking the same thing, and I'm like, okay. Um, so stay, stay in that place with the Lord um, as we get into the Word this morning, because I do believe that God wants to make himself known. One of, the, one of the phrases, or two of the phrases of that is, when I don't see it, you're working. When I don't feel it, you're working. Right? And so often we're waiting for the feeling or we're waiting so that we can see, and yet God is still God and he's still moving and working in ways that we can't even fathom. And that's where we can praise him this morning. And I, my prayer is, is that we would press in and allow the spirit to just minister, uh, that he, we would receive this word that he has. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, yeah. So here is like during the prayer break, I went in the back to look for my glasses and I found that they were over there and I was contemplating okay, there's a little walk area that I can make, but then what if, right? I'm like, okay, that wouldn't be good. So thanks, Stephen. So, because it would be my lot to, in the middle of a prayer, you would hear a So anyway, yeah, yeah, a wave, right? Um, so this morning, I'm starting a new series, um, I really just believe that we're going to be kind of here for a few weeks, um, and this series is going to come out of actually 2 Peter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. So if you'll turn with me, and here's what I want to encourage you to do throughout the week. Um, how many of y'all remember those uh, commercials way back when the, how many licks does it take to get into the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? Right, one, a two, a three, <laughs> three, you know, but it's a lot more than that. Here is my deal. I really do believe that I want to encourage us when you have time throughout the week to read through Second Peter 1, 1 through 15, allowing the Lord to speak to you even before we get together, but allowing him to speak to you. I, I just believe that in the times that we are living in, we need this word. Um, I, I, I read part, a part of this to Stephen the other night, and you know, and I read, I don't know, what did we do, the first five verses, and I said, did you get it? 
and you're like, whoa, there's just, you know, there was a lot there. And if you read through, there's just so much to unpack, but I do believe there's so much that the Lord is trying to speak to his people through this word in the times that we are living in today. Second Peter is under the backdrop. It was probably written by Peter back in either, they, they think between 64 and 68 AD. So this is the time of, of Nero, uh, his reign, where there was a lot of persecution. Um, but there was also a lot of false prophets and false teaching that was going on. And so Peter was, his whole heart was for the people, you know, for the people of God, and he needed to get that word in. And this is towards the end of his life. He knew that his, the end was coming for him. But if you read the first even 15 verses of this, there is a lot of Peter writing saying, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking this to remind you. I'm speaking this as a service of reminder to you. I mean, he even says um, in verse 12, therefore, you know, after you get through towards the end, he says, therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. And so Peter didn't mind he didn't mind to remind. And so I'm thinking, I, I shouldn't mind to remind. And I want us to just stay here because when he's talking about these qualities, we're going to be looking at unpacking what are these qualities that the Lord has put within his people that have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What are these qualities? And it's not just qualities just to say, uh, be good with. It's these qualities to increase in, to grow in. Don't get stuck thinking with any of these qualities like we've made it, but are we going to increase in these qualities? And so we're going to be looking through this over the, or the next few weeks. Um, false teaching, false prophesying, a lot of that going on in our day and age. Um, there is a counterfeit church that has been present. Um, there is also the bride of Christ that is present. And how, how do you and I know the difference between the two? Can we tell the difference between the two? Do we have a discernment? Counterfeit looks genuine. Counterfeit looks the part, right? But underneath it's not. And I believe that in the, in the day, in our society, there is a church a counterfeit church where the name of Jesus is being used, that the Father is being used, that the Holy Spirit is being used, but underneath it, it's not true because it, it, it's leading people on a course that is very different than these qualities that we're going to be looking at. And so those qualities, if we're not increasing in, we, get, we can get caught up in the counterfeit because the counterfeit is, is attractive. I'm just going to tell you, the counterfeit is very attractive. The counterfeit is easy. Um, the counterfeit is, um, well, you think about someone making counterfeit money, that's pretty, that's pretty easy to crank out the checks, right? And then you do it and get away with it. So we're going to be looking at this. Some of the counterfeit that I see going on in our nation have to do, you know, there, there's probably more, but uh, the prosperity gospel is out there. It's a gospel that is talking a lot about Jesus, but if you follow Jesus, he's just going to bless you in incredible ways. And, 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 and the prosperity gospel, if you're suffering, you shouldn't be suffering as a follower. The prosperity gospel just veers away from the suffering follower. Because if you're following, if you're really following, you're not going to suffer. That's so off course. Um, there's the name it and claim it. There's the name it and claim it gospel. I'm, I'm going to name, I'm going to speak the name of Jesus. I'm going to speak or I'm going to proclaim what even, even scripture. I'm going to use it. I'm going to claim it, but it's a magic wand, right? And it has nothing to do with what's going on inside of here. I'm going to use Jesus as a magic wand to get what I need out of life. There's Christian universalism. Christian universalism, I believe, right now is going on in incredible ways. There are so many people that say, I'm a Christian and I don't believe in hell. 
that, that Jesus died on the cross, and when he died on the cross, he died for everyone? Is that true? Yeah, he, it is true. He died for everyone. But is everyone going to be forgiven? Is everyone going to receive the message of grace? No. I mean, but Christian universalism is saying yes. You know, Christian universalism is saying we're all going. We're all pretty good, you know. It's just going to be maybe different levels of goodness, but we're all pretty good. There's no hell. And then there's the consumer gospel, which, Shane, you started. Yeah. So there's the consumer gospel. <laughs> there you go. He didn't start it. And then there's the consumer gospel that is, it is that consumerism that you and I experience when we, when we go to the supermarket, right? Or it's what can I get from it? You know, and, and sometimes the consumer gospel is I, I just come in and what can Jesus do for me? What have you done for me lately? That's a song, right? What have you done for me lately? Right? And if you're not doing what I think you should be doing, then I'm not going to follow you. So there, there's a lot of different false gospels that's circulating. And here's the thing. When I say the counterfeit church, and you and I, if we've received Christ, there's some of these elements that could even be operating in us, and we're not even aware of it. Right? I mean, I, I talk about in my own life how when, when, I, when I would pray for my parents not to get divorced, and then when they got divorced, I just really got disillusioned with who God was, and it was because my mindset was, what have you done for me lately? I had no idea I was operating in that. But the Lord had to, over time and in his patience, he, he helped me see things differently. So there is this counterfeit and these movements that are out there. But how do we navigate the waters that we're in? And when you look at a passage like this, there is so much in this, but I think of Peter and who Peter was, and Peter was such a flawed individual. And yet, and yet Jesus called him. Jesus said to this flawed individual, Peter was one of those guys that it seems like the more that you read about Peter, he, he wore his emotions out on his sleeve. I mean, Whatever Peter was thinking, um, it didn't stay there. He, he would speak it out. If he didn't like what Jesus said, like, I'm going to go to the cross, I'm going to die, hey, I'm going to rebuke you. Come here, Jesus, you know? Um, Jesus, if this is really you, command me to come out on the water. You know? Jesus, I'm ready to die for you even tonight. I mean, he just spoke things out. He, he was flawed, but yet he was also a man that humbled himself before the Lord and knew what it was to be restored. See, that's the beauty of Peter. He was, he was flawed, but he knew what it was to be restored. Peter, right, I'm going to die for you. Jesus, no, you, actually tonight you're going to betray me. You're going to deny me not once, not twice, but three times. And sure enough, when he denied him three times and he ran off weeping, when Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus went about restoring Peter. And if you remember, right in John 21, he says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Tend to my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. Feed my sheep. And when I think about a passage like this, when I think about this letter, and with Jesus restoring, Peter, and when the Holy Spirit is inspiring Peter to write this letter to followers of Jesus who have been dispersed, but he's feeding his sheep, and he's aware of the dangers, and his whole desire is to equip people to be ready for what's present and even what's coming. I was telling the elders this morning, I don't know if y'all are aware of this Supreme Court ruling um, that still allows that church gatherings in homes can take place in the state of California? Have y'all have heard about that ruling? Yeah, so the, the Supreme Court ruled that churches can still gather in homes because the governor of California didn't want that. But here's the thing that should, should shake us a little bit, not should unnerve us because we're in Christ, but it was a 5-4 ruling. 5-4 is not a whole lot. It's like right there. And that's in California. So I don't know what's coming, 
But when I'm reading this, it's like the Lord saying to his church, listen, I've imparted certain qualities in you. Increase in them. Grow in them. Make them a priority in your life. And the the first thing is, and he starts with this letter, and here's the first thing that I just want to ask you, and as I asked myself, how do you see your faith? How do you see your faith? So if you've accepted Jesus into your life, And right now, what's going on in your life, how do you see your faith? That's an important question to ask. Do you see your faith as shaky, like you're on shaky ground? Do you see your faith as below others? Like, Like, think about Peter, okay, the Apostle Peter. Is your faith on par with the Apostle Peter? Or when you think about Peter's faith and your faith, we're like, no, no. He was a spiritual giant. I don't have that kind of faith. Where where are you? How do you see your faith? Well, here is how Peter, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, this is what he says. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours. Get that. As the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what he's saying is, is that when we recognize that our righteousness is not in ourself, but what Christ did on the cross for us, and when we appropriate that by faith into our life, our faith is of the same value as Peter's. So Peter does not have this kind of like one-upmanship on us. His faith is our faith. It's the same value. It's the same faith that drove Peter forward as the apostle that he became. It's the same faith that's in you and I if if, if that faith is all about Jesus. That's incredible. That's good news. And Peter is trying to say, listen, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours, it's genuine, it's authentic, it's based upon Jesus Christ. It's not less than. You know, in India, one of the things that when we would minister, uh, sometimes I would bring up faith, and and you would see, if you'd bring up the church fathers or talk about Moses, and you'd almost see like, it would almost be this thinking of Moses' faith is greater than mine. The glory that Moses had was so much greater. I, I can't ever have that. You know, that's not true. That's just not true. Jesus says, I am the author and perfecter of the faith. He is the one that has instilled faith in you to believe in Jesus. And it's the same faith that he instilled in Peter. And it's the same faith. Look around with brothers and see, we have the same faith. Now, we may be at different places in our walk with the Lord, but it's not somewhere like he has this extraordinary faith and our faith is just basic faith no that faith that moves mountains that faith that walks the walk the narrow that's the same and thank you Lord for that kind of faith and that's what Peter wants us to recognize even in starting this letter it's by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ he goes on here's another part of this letter what power has been granted to us. So if we understand that we have the same faith in Jesus Christ as Peter had that drove him, it's then what power has been granted to us today? Now this word power is so... I grew up uh, definitely in the movie times. I'm a latchkey kid. I grew up watching TV and movies and 1977 was my first time to see Star Wars and all about learning about the force, right? The force, a power. But that force can either be good or evil. The kids uh, grow up uh, watching Harry Potter. A, A magic, a power that can be good or evil. It's impersonal. It can be used and manipulated according to what you want to do with it. And so I think sometimes we can get confused when we read in Scripture about power because the kind of power that he's talking about is very personal, it's very intimate, it's not not a thing, it's not an it. 
And I, I want to read this out of uh, chapter, uh, verse 3. So chapter 1, verse 3, it says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. His divine power. You think about Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. And that word power means dunamis. It's, it's the word for miracle. It's a, it, it's, you, you read some scriptures that, that use the word miracle or miracles. It's the same word. It's dunamis. It's power. Do you realize that if you have, are sitting here and have received Christ, you are a walking miracle today? Wow, y all, y all, you guys don't seem all that excited. Have you all ever witnessed a miracle? No. If Christ is in you, you are a living miracle. It's the power of God for salvation. For Jesus to die on the cross and then come and give you the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to indwell you, to regenerate you, to renew you, that's miraculous. Honestly, you guys don't seem really excited. And I'm like, I'm, I'm so pumped about this. I'm like, wow. The power of God to deliver me out of darkness, out of confusion. When I was, when I was, when I was going towards hell, when I was in bondage to sin, Jesus died for me and delivered me out of that. And I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Wow. That's a miracle. So if you're telling me you've never witnessed a miracle and yet you're saying you're a Christian, then the two can't go. If you are a Christian, a bona fide Christian receiving Christ, you are a walking, living miracle. Look what God can do. <laughs> Amen? Look what God can do. I mean, wow. Thank you. I mean, that's that, that's that place where Jesus wants us to recognize when we wake up in the morning and when we get to look at ourselves in the face, however we're looking and however we're smelling, we're like, wow, the power of God to deliver me and make me new. Thank you, Jesus. And this power, this divine power has been granted. It, it hasn't been orchestrated by you and me. It's been granted. See, that's humbling. Because none of us in this room were worthy, but it's been granted to us. Yes, Jesus. And then the Father is saying, I'm granting. Holy Spirit, fill them, indwell them. They are now temples. Their bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. There's freedom in that. Right? That's where sometimes I think we... That's why Peter is saying, I'm, I'm saying these things as reminders because through our life, we can so easily forget these things, right? I, I don't know what's going on in most of your life. I know what's going on in my life and that of my family, but I know how easily I can forget that I'm a walking miracle. I can forget that the, that the Holy Spirit indwells me, and that my body, my, my mind, my heart, my soul, the Holy Spirit is present, and, and I can ask to be filled and empowered with what's been granted by the Father through His Son, Jesus. I don't have to now work for righteousness. It's by faith. I get to grow. I get to grow in Him. Now you think about this, seeing that His divine power has granted to us, wow, can I just, what is that word like right after us and before pertaining? Everything. Everything. Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything. Now, when we're reading scripture, does, does, does words like pop out like everything? Like, wow. But you start pondering everything. And it better be a wow. Wow. Everything pertaining to, to life. Everything has been given to us. We're, you 
And this is why I believe that word, you know, way maker, miracle worker. If Christ is in you, you are not lacking in anything. Can I say that? You are not lacking in anything from God's point. Because from God's point, he has granted you divine power from above for everything pertaining to life and godliness. Now, can we be missing out? Yeah. But on God's behalf, he has done it all by grace. Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life. And here is that place where we have to just think about, okay, when you're saying life, God, and you've, you've granted me divine power for everything in life, this is where we can get so disillusioned because how do we see life and what should, how, should, how should life be working out for us, right? Is, is this life all about the, ro the rose petals and the smooth road? Is that the kind of life that he's talking about? Because if it's that, God, then, I, I, man, I'm missing something here. You know, what is this life that he's talking about? And in the Greek, there are three Greek words for life. There are three Greek words for life. In our English, we just have life. So how easy we can get confused on what does this mean pertaining to everything with concerning life. When the Holy Spirit comes to infuse us, We've got, oh gosh, I'm sorry. This is small letters. Okay. So, we've got everything. So, in the word life, the first Greek word for life, and I know I've shared this, but again, as a reminder, there is the bios life. And the bios life begins when you and I breathe our first breath here on earth, and it ends when we leave this earth. It has to do with our existence, our soul existence here. There's a passage out of Mark uh, 12, 44. It says, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her pro po uh, poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And so whatever you and I are living on, you know, the, what's ever in our account, the, the clothes that we're wearing, what we're living on, that's part of the bios life. Well, what happens if this is that life that we're talking about and that life gets disrupted or taken away? Yeah, that's not, that's not what Jesus is talking about. The other life is pasuke. This has to do with the soul. This has to do with our, our emotions. It has to do with our will. It has to do with what, the way we think. This is a hard scripture for some of us to just kind of work through, but Matthew 10.37 says... He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He, has found his, he who has found his life, his pasuke, will lose it. And he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. So it's like what... Whatever is going on inside and, and driving us, that's have to do with our soul, our pasuke. And many times that's what's feeding us. That's what we're after. Like, you know, that's that consumer gospel, basically. What is feeding my soul I'm, is going to make me content. And if Jesus doesn't feed my soul the way that I think he should feed my soul, then I'm going to walk away from Jesus. Because my soul is wanting fill in the blank. My soul is wanting to lie because I'm in a tight spot. And if I, if I really come clean with this, then I'm going to be in trouble. So I'm going to lie. That's what my, so my soul will protect, right? If my soul is coveting someone else's things, I'm going to do whatever I can in life to get those things because I think those things will make me content. And if Jesus isn't going to give those things, well, I'll go to church, but my soul is still going to go after these things. Oh, I got my new iPhone. I can rest. And then there's the next iPhone right down, and you're like, oh, this is trash. Right? If, if, if you guys who have iPhones, which I don't, but if you guys have iPhones, can you imagine someone giving you a gift of the very first iPhone? Would you go like, wow, that's incredible. 
No, because it doesn't have the latest stuff. Your soul would go, I don't want that. That's not, I don't need that. That's the soul speaking within us. But when Jesus is speaking, and when he's talking about he's giving everything pertaining to life, when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us, and he wants to fill us full, it's full of the life that comes from heaven above, and that's Zoe life. And the Zoe life is all in the scriptures that we've, you've heard quoted. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's Zoe. John 10, 10, the thief comes to only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have Zoe life and life in its abundance. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. So when you talk about Zoe life, Zoe life that's been given to us through the Holy Spirit is all about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and it's never outside of him. But in him, he will speak into our bios and he will speak into our soul. So when we bring ourselves under the lordship of Jesus Christ, the soul and the body align. They align. And that's where we can then find contentment in whatever circumstance because we're finding our life in Jesus and not in people and things. And that's the big struggle because we do like things and we do like people, <laughs> I hope. Because those are, we want to be liked. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want the new car. We want whatever. And yet when we are in relationship with Jesus Christ and we have the Holy Spirit, the divine power, he, gets, he, he leads and directs us. He begins to show us what that Zoe life looks like in the present as well as the future. And that's important because Zoe life isn't all about when I breathe my last breath and I get to heaven and I just got to suck it up right now. The Zoe life is right now in the present with Jesus Christ. You know, again, going to the song, I'm hot. How many of y'all are hot? Man, I'm hot. The Zoe life is all about this place of saying, Jesus, you are, you are my all in all. And, and I want relationship with you no matter what. If everyone forsakes you, I'm not going to forsake you. In this time where we have seen people struggle with their faith and find difficulty, are we going to stay the course with Christ? Are we going to go after the Zoe life that he's offering us right now and to allow him to kind of drive our, our, our lives? Everything pertaining to life and godliness. I think this is not a subject that I, I don't even think Christians, in some ways, I think where our trap is on this passage with godliness is that 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 is really kind of real. It's a reality. It says this, But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And then it says this, having the appearance of godliness. You're like, how does someone that fits that have an appearance of godliness? Yeah, I think we can. We, we, we can easily do that. I, I, I mean, I can have one minute, and I can, I can be in the Word, and I'm reading the Word, well, right now, I'm giving the appearance of godliness. And then the next minute, I can go out and do a, 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 a selfie look. There's two different appearances that I'm giving. But what's actually going on in the heart? Well, what am I after? What, what, you know, that's between the Lord and me. 
I can be in the Bible giving an appearance of godliness, but not in relationship with Jesus. I can be praying publicly, giving the appearance of godliness, but my life not reflect his love. And it's easy to do in each of our lives. And we are living in a time where Christians have this appearance of, but they're denying its power. There is power in godliness when the Holy Spirit is being allowed to lead and direct us. Think of this, and this is kind of how we've got to be careful with physical appearances because the scribes and the Pharisees were really focused on godliness. I mean, they had their tassels and they were focused on prayers and everything else. And yet Jesus, the Son of God, walks in, begins to work miracles, the power of God unleashed, people being delivered, but on a Sabbath, and he was all of a sudden viewed a Sabbath breaker. He didn't have the appearance of godliness. He didn't fit their appearance. And here's the thing for you and I. We've got to recognize that in our own lives, in some ways, if we're really honest, we have worked up what we think godliness looks like. And that starts informing our soul. How can I not have this intimacy with Jesus, but continue the appearance of? And where Christ is saying, no, that's a trap. That's a trap. Coming to church is good. But if coming to church is for the appearance of, that's not good. Does that make sense? And, and, and no one can see why you and I are here today. It's between the Lord and in our hearts are we pursuing Him because we can all have this appearance of. Right. Here's the other thing about godliness. 1 Timothy 6.6 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. I love this part because think of it. If, if the Holy Spirit... If we are walking with him as children of God, then we're going to be at peace. Even if there is, like what we talked about in Sunday school, what Shane was talking about, if there is a storm going on, can we still be at peace in the midst of the storm? That's godliness. No one can see it, but we can know it, experience it in the midst of storms. Because the Holy Spirit is settling us. The Holy Spirit is reminding us, hey, I have you in this. You're not alone. You may not understand what the end is going to be, but I've got you. I'm with you. And there can be that place of peace. Right? There can be that place of saying, having, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. 1 Timothy 4.8 for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Guess what life we're talking about there? Zoe. For the present life and the life to come. So here's, here's the very center part of, of, of godliness. Godliness comes from the fear and awe of God. Because with the Holy Spirit within us, do we have such a, a reverence and awe of God that we're not going to start our day without asking for the Holy Spirit to fill us? That's the aweness of God. I want to be filled. I want to know you in this day. I want to encounter you as I'm talking with my family or as I'm going to work or as I'm coming back from work. Holy Spirit, would you fill me? It's the need for God. That's the reverence of God. That's where godliness starts and that's where it ends because we recognize what Christ did and he wants to go with us. But to be trained in it, there's more to grow in. There's more to know him in. I'm 51 years old. I've been walking with the Lord since age 20. And there's been a lot of ups and downs. 
I've had the appearance of godliness in my life, and I have had God come and humble me. I've had so many different facets of my life. But when I look at a passage like this for us as a church, in the season of life where the world is and where we are, I'm like, this is where we need to hunker down for a while. Because the Lord has given us qualities to grow in. He wants each one of us to be growing. There is, I'm telling you, it's like Jesus saying to his church, wake up, come on, it's time to get up. It's time to get going. I've got things for you. You, you might have been asleep. It's time to wake up. I, I used to hate my dad going in the, coming in the morning and waking me up because my dad was like one of these. He loved the mornings, you know. Hello, son, you know, come on. I'm like, oh, you don't speak to me, right? And yet we have our heavenly father that wants us waking up with him. And, and he's there to try to prod us on saying, Come on, my daughter. Come on, my son. Let's you and me do this day together. I, I, want, I want you to give me glory. I want you to know me in this day. You know. I'm not even bringing up the qualities right now. This is where we're going to be camping out. I just want to end with this. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Again, it's, it's through Christ. It's not, oh, I've got to work these. It's, no, no, it's through Christ. It's in not the knowledge of, oh, I've got knowledge about Christ. It's, it's no, I, I know Jesus. And it's, and it's through knowing Jesus and for his glory and excellence that I'm going to walk this walk of faith. It's not enough to say, okay, I've got this scripture memorized. It's that place of, no, knowing you and how this word now affects me and how it infuses me to walk with you, to bring you glory, to bring you honor with my life. Amen? I mean, that's a... That's so exciting. You and I are, are walking miracles. I'm, I'm going to kind of veer off here. I'd like, us to, I'd like us to end with Waymaker again, if we could. I'd like us to stand. But if you don't know that you are a walking miracle, here, here's the thing. If you're not sure that you're a walking miracle, if you're not sure where you are in the kingdom, then, man, come and talk to me. Uh, talk to me after this service. Talk to me as we're singing Waymaker. If you have... If you have given your life to Christ, but you found yourself kind of in a, kind of stuck maybe, uh, man, let's sing this, but let's allow the Holy Spirit to remind us of his unfailing love for us and what he wants to do in our life. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, bending every heart, I worship you. I worship you, oh, you are way maker, miracle worker.
promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. 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 Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. What waymaker? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Oh, that is who you are. 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 receive this benediction would you go from here with the faith that has been given to you that's not lacking that faith that has its eyes fixed on Christ would you go from here with the Holy Spirit empowering you he has been granted to you he's been given to you to lead you in everything that pertains to life and godliness so go in his name, glorifying him throughout this week. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Be blessed. Be blessed.